Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today's game is Hot Lips, which was a 1982 release from London Software, developed by Greg Young. All of London Software's other games also seem to have been developed by Greg Young as well, too, so chances are that London Software was Greg Young. The game is a fairly simple arcade-style affair, in which you must lure a band of monsters into the waiting jaws of Hot Lips, who, in the words of the game's advertisement, is a mega mouth that will eat anything, including you. The game retailed for a whopping $29.95 on its original release, which translates to about $82 today, taking inflation into account, and you thought PS5 games were expensive. Anyway, let's go play Hot Lips. Okay, here we are with Hot Lips from Greg Young. Um, I'd not come across this game before, but uh, I, I gave it a try just to see what it was all about and found it quite fun, so I thought I'd uh, showcase it today. So your goal in this game is to move around the maze and lure the little goblin things into the mouth of Hot Lips in order to defeat them. And at the same time, of course, you must not get caught by Hot Lips and you must not get caught by the goblins either. Now those little uh, pink squares, as you can see, they slow you down when you move over them. The little things, I think they just give you points. I haven't noticed them actually have any sort of specific effect on you, but... Oh, they turn into blocks if you leave them be. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so it's an interesting take on the maze game formula. It's not just trying to recreate Pac-Man. It's doing something a little bit different with the format. And I like that. It's simple, but it's effective. It works well as a game. Three oh, too late. Oh, no. And it's a really simple concept, but it, it generates a nice bit of excitement and adrenaline while you're playing because you're sort of constantly being chased. And I'm not sure if the pace increases as you go on, but it certainly feels like it does with the sort of accelerating sound in the background. That was very common practice for sort of arcade style games of the period. You've doubtless heard it in games like Asteroids and Space Invaders and all that sort of thing. It's supposed to sort of give the impression of a, a heartbeat, I think. Uh oh. Uh oh. That was never going to end well, was it? Now, you can press the fire button to just stop in this. Um, I don't think that has any sort of useful effect other than allowing you to simply stop moving like that, but so there's no way of getting rid of the um, coloured blocks, I don't think. You just have to deal with them wherever they've ended up. Three in a row, very nice. Uh oh. Oh no! you. Oh no. Come on, through the middle. There we go. Lovely. And we've got the tr traditional Atari 8-bit format of uh, the game gradually changing colour with the passing levels to give you a sense of achievement in a sense that you are in fact progressing through levels despite the fact that the maze is the same each time. I think the only thing that's changing is the number of uh, coloured blocks that you start a stage with and perhaps the speed at which they appear. Yeah, it's, it's, it's taking less time for the pickups to turn into the squares now. 
Obviously, it's actually actually quite difficult to get to them in time now. Oh, this is going to make it very difficult. Use every ounce of my Pac-Man 99 skills here. Oh no! That was never going to end in a suitable way, was it? Come on, come on, through the middle, through the middle. There we go. Right, you through that. Thank you. Oh no, it's all over. Not bad. Quite a low scoring game, as you can see, 1,410 points there. But uh, not bad. Let's have another go. In fact, before we do that, let's see if we press. Oh, if we press select, we can start a later stage. And if you press option, you can do single or two player mode. I would assume this is uh, an alternating two player game. I don't have a second joystick plugged in, so I can't really test that. But there, there is a two player mode. Um, all right, let's go from the beginning one more time, uh, and then maybe we'll we'll try starting from the later stage as well. The first level, it, it is much slower. And then it speeds up when you're down to the last enemy. Oh no! Disaster! There we go. The real hot lips begins here. Okay, not too bad, not too difficult. Ideally, you want to try and herd them all onto one side if you can, but that's surprisingly tricky to do. if the different things have sort of different AI in the same way that Pac-Man does. Oh no. It almost felt like at, at one point one of them was deliberately stuck a different direction to me in order to catch me. And sort of try and head me off as it were. Yeah, nicely done. Onwards to our next challenge. Come on, right through the middle. One, two, three, beautiful. Nope. Oh, cheeky bugger, no! I like this game, it's good fun. I'm getting a lot of sunlight in my face, excuse me, let me just shut the curtains a bit so I don't look like I'm uh, playing this in the middle of a nuclear winter. It's actually a nice day here today, for once. Well, that didn't go great, did it? Alright, let's try starting at stage. Let's try starting at stage five, shall we? Alright, come on, green boy. Through the middle, and you two. Oh no! Well, I took two of them down, which is the start. Right, both on the same side now. Now they are not. <laughs> oh dear me. Yeah, we're starting to reach a stage now where you actually need need to take the risk of running through the middle of the mouth. But obviously that can also end in death. And no one likes death. Ooh, one to level six. It's gone blue, everyone. It's gone blue.
Some of them do weirdly feel like they're getting smarter. I feel like I can't necessarily force the way they move in quite the same way as in some of the earlier levels. I might, I might just be imagining that, but... There we go. My pro-tier hot lip skills. Oh, no. Not good. Ooh. Wait there, chomp on him. Very nice. Right there, you two come through the middle. Lovely stuff. Uh-oh. 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 Ooh. This is getting intense. Oh, and there's so many of the slowdown things. It's tricky. One thing I'm not sure about in this is um, you notice that sort of your scoring potential doesn't increase as you go through subsequent levels. So like if you start at a, like, there's no real incentive to start at a later level unless you just get really get bored by those early levels because you get the same amount of points for killing things on the first levels as you do on the later levels. So you may as well start at the beginning and get some easy points. And just try and last as long as you can. Because with this being an arcade style game, there's obviously not going to be an end to this at any point. You just do your best to try and survive as long as possible. Now, all it really needed was some sort of end level bonus to fix that. And I think one of the one of the simplest, most effective ways of handling that I think I've seen is in. Um, food fight on the Atari 7800 which it's just very simple for, for completing the level you get a certain number of points and with each new level it adds I think 500 points to that bonus so the actual scores you get for doing things in the game are the same but you're rewarded for completing those levels The other alternative is to do what um, Atari did with a lot of its arcade games, which is if you start at a later stage, you give the player a big bonus if they manage to get through that stage that they start on. And again, I always found that quite an effective approach because that means that expert players can start later in the game if they want to and they would be awarded roughly the amount of points that they would have if they played from the beginning. Often in a lot of cases you have the opportunity to get slightly more points if you do actually manually play from the beginning, but obviously that also puts you at a little bit more risk of making silly mistakes and dying along the way as well. So that's proper sort of arcade style risk versus reward mechanics at work. Whereas this, like I say, there's, there's no real incentive to start at those later stages other than simply giving yourself an additional challenge. Which is a bit of a shame. Because this, this is otherwise a, a pretty solid game. And it's unfortunate that we have that issue because one of the most important things about arcade style games is the scoring system. Because the scoring system is what gives you the incentive to replay. The scoring system is, is your reason to keep trying to try and improve. It's a way of measuring your improvement.
And if there's not that much incentive to get quite and quite better, then uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say you failed because this is still a fun game. This is still an enjoyable game that I'm having a good time with. But yeah, it's it's just a, a little bit of a missed opportunity, I think. But then the other thing you have to bear in mind is something I've mentioned numerous times before in this series, which is that the early to mid 80s were a time when a lot of the developers were still figuring out the best way to do video games. They were still trying to figure out sort of the best approaches to genre, the best way that you should handle things like scoring systems and that kind of thing. So. It's understandable. It's easy to look back on something like this from a modern perspective and go, oh, well, it should have done this, but... You know, at, at, at the time, there was very much this sort of culture of experimentation, of trying to figure things out, of trying to work out what, what the best way of doing things was. And not everyone got it right. And that's an important part of defining things like rule sets for games and that sort of thing. Because someone's got to make those mistakes. Someone's got to make those mistakes first for um, for everyone to be able to realise what, what is good and what isn't so good. Anyway, I think we've, uh, we've sort of exhausted pretty much everything uh, Hot Lips here has to offer. That's a fun little game, actually. It's a nice, simple little game. Um... That original American race very, very pricey for what it is. Although, that said, that said, if you look back at the prices of like some of the old Atari cartridge releases and that sort of thing, it actually wasn't all that unusual to see some some games of the period going for about twenty nine dollar ninety five. I think in the UK, I might have a slightly distorted view of um, some games' value because one, as I've mentioned before piracy was rife you just have to go along to the local computer club and you get discs full of games uh, just for your membership fees obviously completely illegally but no one cared at the time um and also when stuff was released commercially here in the uk it tended to be sort of between about the any anywhere from like two pounds for a game on tape uh, up to about sort of twelve ninety nine to fourteen ninety nine, disc based stuff tended to go for. Cartridge based stuff, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't remember buying any cartridge based stuff because by by the time I was playing Atari games, my family already owned all those games, so I, I don't know how much those those cost them in the first place. Um, I have a feeling they were a bit more expensive, but certainly during my time with the Atari A bit, most of the games that I picked up were between sort of two pounds and fifteen pounds. Um, the upper end of that is still sort of reasonably pricey for the period when you take inflation into account. But uh, yeah, I guess, again, that was another area of things where people were trying to work things out, trying to decide what things were worth. And uh, they decided that this was worth $29.95 at the time. So fair play to them if they managed to get that. Anyway, we'll leave that there for today. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.